Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, June 7th, 2019. Welcome to another eBay video. Today we're going to be discussing returns way past your return period. For instance, if you took returns for 30 days, what happens when someone wants to return something 90 days or even longer? I've got a great story for you guys this week, so stay tuned for that. We're also going to be discussing other eBay issues and your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. Unbelievably, it is not 100% cloudy and rainy. There are quite a few clouds, but there's also some sun peeking through. So this is good. It's 71 degrees. I'll take it. That being said, let's get into your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video, and we'll do a nice little discussion afterwards. Stephen Bond wrote about packing slips. The new packing slip is terrible. Sometimes I need to make adjustments to the totals, and now I can't. Another fine example of eBay fixing what isn't broken. Foxtail for Thrifter wrote, Great show, Joe. I stopped sending invoices about a year and a half ago, and I'm glad I did. It seems to have made no difference. Also on packing slips, Teresa Webster wrote, If eBay is going to continue with this packing format, then they have to provide an invoice for record keeping. You have to be able to show proof of your business income. So they better come up with something. Also on packing slips, Russell Hunky wrote, Joe, I'm royally pissed about the packing slip breakout issue. Just like you, I at first thought it was a glitch. This is nothing but idiocy on eBay's part. I do the same thing you do, print out two copies of the packing slip, one for my records and one for the customer. I'd like to join the movement and petition eBay to put it back the way it was. It just causes more work and screws up my records. I like to have copies of item costs, shipping costs, and sales tax charged for my records. Now there is no way to see the sales tax charge. Utter stupidity on their part. What do we need to do to get this changed? Hope you can help. Thanks. Like I said last week, go on to Facebook, contact eBay for Business, and tell them your feelings. It can't hurt. On partial refunds, here's an interesting little story from Robert K. eBay double dipping. An eBay CSR walked me through doing a partial refund of $273 on Saturday to a customer who opened a false item not as described case. Sunday I noticed another refund initiated by eBay for a full refund of $314. This crashed my bank account due to only $160 balance and two NSF fines of $25 each were deducted from my account. The credit union just reversed the NSF fee after hearing my explanation. eBay for Business is working with me to see what happens on Wednesday when the e-check is supposed to clear. I didn't think e-checks could bounce. I'm tired of some sellers who say returns are just the cost of doing business. For me, it's just the cost of going out of business. For this reason, I don't do eBay returns or I would have been sunk a long time ago. The last time I took them was when the conditions were stricter was in 2013. I was a top rated plus seller getting a 20% discount with average monthly sales of $4,500. Now it's $3,200. So how is eBay better now? Robert. In this week's comments, could you elaborate a little more as to what's going on? I don't quite understand all of it. I know that you sold something. What was it? And what did the customer say was wrong with the item? He filed a false item, not his described claim. And my next question is, why didn't you just say to him, okay, send it back for a full refund? I'm just, I just want to clear up a few things and find out what's going on because I myself will take refunds, no questions asked, but I'm very leery about giving partial refunds. On non-paying bidders, the truth wrote, non-payment is becoming a disaster. 
selling as is items and people refuse payment after making a best offer unless I guarantee it's perfect stupid time to bring back rating the buyers or dropping the rating system altogether no free returns no promoted listings eBay fees too high but I still love eBay the only thing I really want to address there is the having the best offer on your fixed price listings I honestly in my humble opinion do not think it's a good idea and I will not do it because like you said the truth like you said there are too many people that don't pay and nothing ever happens okay you could have an item fixed price with best offer for a hundred dollars or best offer guy makes you a valid offer of 80 bucks you accept it send him his invoice he never pays and you can't do a thing about it and that guy will not be censured by eBay I'm telling you okay stick to fixed price immediate payment required if somebody sends you an offer unsolicited like they do to me all the time let's say for 80 bucks you say to him will you buy the item today he says yes go back to the listing change the price down to eighty dollars for him with immediate payment required if he buys it he's got to pay if he doesn't buy it today no big deal you raise it back to the hundred I've done that many many times and it always works for me on unpaid item strikes coincidentally DS services wrote hi Joe thanks for another great video I want to correct you about your comment on unpaid item strikes on fixed priced items. I only sell buy it now items and get buyers purchasing and not paying all the time. I have it set up in my settings to give them a reminder after five days and then close the case after another five days if they still have not paid. I get a message from eBay informing me the buyer has received an unpaid item strike and my final value fees have been returned. At this point I can release my item. Maybe I didn't make it clear, good sir, but I require immediate payment on all my fixed price listings. So it's actually physically impossible for me to encounter a non-paying buyer. Therefore, let's just say hypothetically, a guy buys my item, pays for it, and two minutes later cancels for whatever reason. I have to give him a refund and he does not get an unpaid item strike that's the point I'm trying to make furthermore why don't you require immediate payment you stated you wait five days before you send an unpaid item reminder and then another five days before you close the case that's ten days wasted man please for your sake require immediate payment on all your fixed price listings you'll be glad you did on returns, Mustafa Darar wrote, I want to share my experience on returns. Selling on eBay for 10 years, if you receive the return back after your return request has been closed, yes, you may send the item back to the buyer. But if the buyer files a credit card dispute and provides proof to his or her credit card provider that he or she has returned the item, PayPal will not protect you and refund the funds plus you'll be charged $25 chargeback fee and you'll lose the item I have seen that many times so I just want you to be aware of it I don't dispute what you're saying I myself have never marked an item returned to sender when these kind of things occur I just put them off to the side and see what happens from there non-paying bidders Black Lotus Boutique wrote eBay needs to pursue a lot of things non-paying buyers buyers who use the contact system to harass you and buyers who try and scam you into a refund by saying they didn't receive the item after the item was delivered I've had two in the past week that tried this after I sent them the screenshot of where the item had been delivered I didn't hear back from them eBay needs to become a little stricter with problem buyers fitchy buyers <laughs> on messages Mayana wrote, whenever I see I've received a message, I cringe. Enough said. While we're on that topic, I want to relate something that happened to me this week. Now, I don't mind when people send me lowball offers. It's part of doing business. You know, I just roll with it. But there's one thing that really does irk me the wrong way. 
I'm going to tell you that right now because it happened this week again. Let's say I have an item for $100 with $30 shipping, okay? Now, if a guy sends me a low wall offer and says, I'll give you $50 plus the shipping, hey, it doesn't bother me. It's just part of doing business. But what really turns the thumb screws is when they say something like, I will give you $40 for this item and I will come to your location and pay you in cash. Here's a guy who only wants to pay 40% of the retail price. He doesn't want to pay shipping and he wants to come when it's convenient for him to my place to get the item. That is a huge no to me. I always write back to them and the first line is I do not accept local pickups for any eBay items whatsoever. That one line usually is enough. But then I go further and I say, in addition, I cannot sell the item that cheap because I paid more than that for it. And then you're done. You never have to worry about hearing from that person again. All right? I got stung royally many years ago back when I did not require immediate payment. I had two different people in one month buy my item, then write me and say, Joe, I'm not going to pay you now. I'm going to wait a month or so till I'm in your area. I want to stop by and pick up this $10 item and pay you in cash. To avoid the shipping cost, they want me to hold their $10 item for when it's convenient for them now, of course, that couldn't happen today, all right? I require immediate payment for everything, but I am dead set against local pickups. I do not accept them under any conditions. You do what works for you. I'm just relating my experiences. A channel comment from Scott Patron. This is the first time I watched your videos and I found it to be excellent. I will definitely watch your videos on a regular basis as I feel that it will help me. I've been selling for just under eight months, and while I'm having success, I want more success. Scott, USN, retired, disabled. Thank you, Scott, for the positive comments. And I have one more channel comment before we get into new business, and it's from Leo Slick. Hey, Joe, maybe eBay should send new employees to you for training, LOL. You know, like they say, it can hide. Okay, let's get started with some new information, but let us first take a drink from the Fox News Cup O' Life. This is the Fox News Cup O' Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. ding a ling a ling a ling <laughs> Today I want to talk to you about returns. I like to talk about returns a lot because it's something that spurs the interest of every one of you because it's something that affects every one of you. But today we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about for a while. Returns well after your acceptance period. As you know, eBay allows seller to choose one of three options. One you can choose no returns where you accept no returns all sales are final however as you know buyers can easily circumvent that by just clicking the item not as described button and ebay will force you to take a return even if you've done nothing wrong and your item is as described okay second option 30-day returns i take 30-day returns because that's the minimum requirement to be a top rated plus seller and there are some that take 60-day returns, which I think is way too long. But that's my opinion. Now, a lot of these people that take the 60-day returns will make posts in Facebook and say things like, well, I take 60-day returns and I rarely get returns that long. All my returns come within the first week. And in my opinion, that is not true. I'm going to prove that to you now. While many of my returns do come in the first or second week, some come longer. Although I accept returns for 30 days, it's not uncommon for me to get returns months or 
years, years after I made the sale. I had one this week. We're going to go to a cutaway. I want you to read this, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss it. Here is a message I received earlier this week. Hi, I ordered these from you almost a year ago and just now noticed they are the wrong hubcaps. Is it possible to return or exchange them? I have a 1964 Cadillac Coupe de Ville and these are not the correct ones for the vehicle. Please advise at your earliest convenience. Thanks. I crossed out her name and then have a great day. These are the correct ones, 1963 to 1964 Cadillac Coupe de Ville sedan Fleetwood hubcaps wheel covers set. They are the correct ones, but what I wanted to show you guys is that I get people trying to do returns a year after they make the purchase. How many of you guys can actually honestly say that? There is no way I'm going to accept that return for so many, many reasons. Let's talk about the time frame, obviously. I accept returns 30 days. I'm not taking an item back one year after I sold it. It's not happening. Now, many years ago, I don't know, about maybe 12 years ago, I had a similar instance where a person had bought a really hot item from me. A hot, hot item something I could sell in a second and they wanted to exchange it for something else. In that case I did it because I knew I could flip the item again and what they wanted didn't cost more than what they had already purchased and they weren't far away so the shipping wasn't going to be expensive. In this case the buyer lives in California as you probably noticed. I'm on the East Coast here in New Jersey. The shipping alone would be forty to fifty dollars just one way. That is crazy. Now the item that they bought from me is a dog item, a 6364 caddy. And I know most of you guys don't know anything about old caddies. But 63 and 64 are basically unto themselves because back then caddy used what's called reverse wheels. So if you just picture the way the wheel looks on a regular car and then picture you turn it inside out. That's the way they made their wheels back in those days. So anything newer than 1964 will not fit in 1964. So there's only a limited market for 63, 64 caddy parts, if you're with me on that. So I don't need those things back. Plus I've got a bunch in stock already. I don't want them back. They're not coming back. And the shipping? 40 to 50 dollars each way it's just crazy I'm very interested I want to hear from as many of you as possible if you received a contact from your buyer one year after you made the sale of what you would call a dog item what would you do please be frank and forthright in your description of what you would do don't worry about offending me all right, it don't, I don't roll that way. I don't take offense unless it's a personal attack. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. You don't have to agree with me. I want to know what you would do if you sold a dog item a year ago, $150, you're glad it's gone, and one year later, the person wants to either exchange or wants a refund. I'm not doing either. One thing that concerns me about the exchange part is that she's got to have some kind of wrong rim on the car because what she bought is for a 63 64 Cadillac and should fit she says it doesn't it's the wrong thing so she's got some kind of an issue out there and the shipping would be crazy she would have to pay another 40 or 50 dollars to ship that back to me then another 40 or 50 dollars to ship my new item back to her okay because I ain't paying that Plus, then I get these dogs back. I don't want them. Not happening. Not happening, guys. I accept 30-day returns, no questions asked. All right? Okay. Next item I want to discuss is your monthly eBay invoice. So I received my monthly eBay invoice the other day, as you guys probably did too, and I was appalled to see 
that it was super high, probably the highest invoice I have ever received in my 20 years selling on eBay. Now, in a way that's good. That means I had killer sales, which I did. I don't dispute that. So I decided to investigate the invoice, which I never do. I never click on my invoice and check it out. But this time it was just so unbelievably high, I had to. So I clicked on view invoice and I scroll down. And as you scroll down on the left, you will see a pie chart of your expenses, your eBay sales, and they break it down what percent you paid in fees this particular month. I paid 10.83% in fees this month on eBay. I'm curious, I'm not sure what category you guys sell in, but if you don't mind, if you have time, check your invoice for the month and let me know or let us know in the comments section what percent of your sales you paid in fees this month. That being said, I'm not going to keep you guys any longer today. As I'm sure most of you guys know, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thank you for watching this eBay video. I come out here each week and I make these videos to try and help you stay successful as an eBay seller. If you think I'm doing a good job, please give me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on the right track and appreciate it. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comments section what you want me to hit up and I'll be glad to do it next week. Remember, I'm a seller friend, not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind. I've solved a lot of problems. I'm still making money online. I've never worn a mask. Some say I could be a CEO or a CFO. You never know. Guys, my sales were excellent this week again. Just excellent. It's the only word I can say. I hope your sales were good too. I want you to go out there, make a lot of eBay sales, rock on, and peace! Yeah! All right, now it's time to lay back a little bit. Let's get ourselves another drink from the Fox News Cup of Life before I leave you guys with my parting three words. This is the Fox News Cup of Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. Oh yeah, very good brew in there. Very good brew. By the way, by the way guys, it's June 7th, 2019. I still don't have a birdhouse. Okay? Enough said? <laughs> okay. I guess there's nothing else left to say but the three very important, crucial words every one of you should live your life by. And me too. And those three words are, DON'T BE FITCHY! Ha <laughs> ha!